Welcome to this educational program. This module provides an overview of self-injection therapy for treatment of erectile dysfunction. It is independently produced and all content may not necessarily reflect the experience of your healthcare provider or the specifics of your situation. This program is strictly informational in nature and no attempt is made to provide opinion or recommendation. Please feel free to view this presentation as many times as necessary. You may also use the player on your left to repeat slides or to skip through them in any order you wish. Erectile dysfunction, sometimes called ED or impotence, is the repeated inability to get or keep an erection firm enough for sexual intercourse. The penis contains two chambers called the corpora cavernosa, or erectile bodies, which run the length of the organ as shown here. A spongy tissue fills the chambers, and this tissue contains smooth muscles, fibrous tissues, spaces, veins, and arteries. The urethra, which is the channel for urine and ejaculate, or semen, runs along the underside of the corpora cavernosa and is surrounded by the corpus spongiosum. The corpora cavernosa are surrounded by a fibrous membrane called the tunica albuginea. When the corpora fill with blood during erection, this membrane helps to compress the veins in the penis, allowing blood to accumulate in the corporal bodies and keeping the erection firm. Erection begins with physical or mental stimulation, or both. Impulses from the brain and local nerves cause the muscles of the corpora cavernosa to relax, allowing blood to flow in and fill the spaces. The penis expands as it fills with blood. The tunica albuginea helps trap the blood in the corpora cavernosa, maintaining the erection. The erection is reversed or becomes soft when muscles in the penis contract to stop the inflow of blood and open outflow channels, allowing more blood to leave than to enter the penis. Interruption with any of these essential steps in the erection process can cause ED. This includes loss of stimulation to start the process, poor nerve transmission of the stimulation to the brain and back to the penis, poor blood flow into the penis, hardening of the penile tissues, or an inability to contain the blood within the penis. Experts believe that psychological factors such as stress, anxiety, guilt, depression, low self-esteem, and fear of sexual failure cause 10 to 20 percent of ED cases. At least 80 percent of men experience ED due to physical causes. There are many such physical or medical causes of ED, as listed here. Some of these are controllable through lifestyle changes and medication, while others, such as age, are not. Age is an important factor in ED, and the likelihood of ED increases as a man gets older. Diabetes also is a very important risk factor, as it affects nerves, blood vessels, and hormone levels. High blood pressure, smoking, obesity, and family history can all be associated with narrowing of the small blood vessels which supply and nourish the penis. As these vessels narrow and harden, a process called atherosclerosis, ED becomes more likely. Illicit drugs, steroids, and other medical problems, such as kidney disease, can also cause ED. Many common medicines, such as blood pressure drugs, antihistamines, antidepressants, tranquilizers, appetite suppressants, and cimetidine, an ulcer drug, can also produce ED as a side effect. Surgery and radiation therapy, especially for prostate and bladder cancer, can injure nerves and arteries near the penis, causing ED. Injury to the penis, spinal cord, prostate, bladder, and pelvis can also lead to ED by harming nerves, smooth muscles, arteries, and fibrous tissues of the corpora cavernosa. Perhaps you can understand how an erection occurs if you imagine how a tire fills with air from an air compressor. In order for the tire to become inflated, the machine has to be plugged in to an electrical outlet, the air compressor has to have a switch turned to the on position, the tubing from the air compressor to the tire has to be wide open with no kinks in it, the tube itself has to be firmly attached to the nipple of the tire, and there has to be a tire without any holes in it. If any of these requirements are not met, then the tire will not fill with air. The same holds true for the erection mechanism. Like the electrical cord, 
there must be nerves that go from the brain through the spinal cord to the nerves that supply the corporal bodies of the penis. The blood supply, like the air, has to be adequately pumped, and the blood vessels, like the tubing, must not be blocked. The blood supply must be adequate to fill the corporal bodies, and there needs to be adequate hormones, especially testosterone, available. Finally, if blood leaks out of the corporal bodies too quickly, erection will not be maintained. For some men, making a few healthy lifestyle changes may solve the problem. Quitting smoking, losing excess weight, and increasing physical activity may help some men regain sexual function. Cutting back on any drugs with harmful side effects is considered next. For example, drugs for high blood pressure work in different ways. If you think a particular drug is causing problems with erection, tell your doctor and ask whether you can try a different class of blood pressure medication. Viagra, Levitra, and Cialis all belong to a class of drugs called phosphodiesterase 5, or PDE5, inhibitors. Taken an hour or so before sexual activity, these drugs work by enhancing the effects of nitric oxide, a chemical that relaxes smooth muscle in the penis during sexual stimulation and allows increased blood flow. Psychotherapy and behavioral modifications in selected patients are considered next if indicated. Oral testosterone can reduce ED in some men with low levels of natural testosterone, but is often ineffective and may cause liver damage. A system for inserting a pellet of prostaglandin, or alprostadil, into the urethra is marketed as MUSE. This system uses a pre-filled applicator to deliver the pellet about an inch deep into the urethra. An erection will begin within 8 to 10 minutes and may last 30 to 60 minutes. This therapy has had some success, but many men experience discomfort with it. Usually, when drugs like Viagra, Levitra, or Cialis don't work, the next step is either locally injected drugs, vacuum devices, or surgically implanted devices. In rare cases, surgery involving veins or arteries may be considered. This presentation focuses on self-injection of drugs into the penis while the other treatments are all discussed in separate modules. Penile injection therapy is a non-surgical technique used to treat impotence. The man injects medication, usually alprostadil or a combination of drugs, into the base of his penis. This causes the penis to become hard almost immediately. The erection then lasts for up to one to two hours. When injected directly into the corpus cavernosum, or erectile body. Alprostadil, also known as prostaglandin E1 and other drugs, act directly on the walls of the small arteries, causing them to relax, fill with blood, and produce an erection, usually within several minutes. Several drugs, particularly papaverin, phentolamine, and prostaglandin, can be used for self-injection. Prostaglandin, or alprostadil, is marketed on its own as caverject or EDEX. Commonly, all three medications are mixed together in varying strengths in a product called Trimix. A combination of only two agents, especially papaverin and phentolamine, is called Bimix. Other formulations are also used, mainly in Europe. These mixtures are not commercially available, but must be mixed by a compounding pharmacy. Direct injection of medication into the penis is extremely effective, fast-acting, and creates a normal-looking erection. While they may be cumbersome for some and do require manual dexterity and training to learn the technical skill of injecting, thousands of men have found this therapy to be highly effective and satisfying. In order to determine the proper dosage of drug to use and how to perform the injection by yourself, your doctor will probably want to conduct a test dosage in the office. The doctor will start with a small amount of drug and then, depending on your response, he or she will select the appropriate amount of drug for you to use at home when you are ready to be intimate with your partner. Also, at this time, the doctor or nurse will instruct you on the proper technique of drawing up the solution into the syringe that you will use for your injections. There are four key steps to the self-injection procedure getting set up, preparing the syringe, selecting and preparing the site for injection, and performing the injection and compressing the site. The following discussion relates to the injection of trimix or bimix. 
if you are using other brand name products such as Caverject or Edex, follow the instructions that come in the package insert or as given by your doctor. Good hygiene is important for safety of the injection. If proper cleanliness is used and you follow the steps outlined by your physician, you will not likely have problems with the injection process. Begin by washing your hands with regular soap and water. The supplies that you will need are the solution, which should be refrigerated when not in use, an alcohol pad, and the syringe. The expiry date should be on each bottle of solution and should be noted. Mixed solutions are generally good for about four months. Do not use the solution if it has changed from clear to cloudy in color. Begin by wiping the top of the bottle with the alcohol pad. Pull back on the plunger of the syringe to allow air to enter the syringe at the level suggested by your doctor. So if your doctor recommended 0.5 cc's of solution, you would pull the plunger to the 0.5 cc mark on the syringe. Hold the bottle with its top pointing down as shown in the diagram. And now without touching the needle or the top of the bottle, push the needle into the top of the bottle of solution. Now, push on the plunger to eject all of the air into the bottle. You should see a few air bubbles float to the top of the upside down bottle. Next, pull back on the plunger in a slow steady motion until the desired amount of solution is in the syringe. You can use your fingers to tap on the syringe to allow any air bubbles that have accumulated in the syringe to float to its top. Push these remaining few air bubbles out of the needle and back into the bottle. If you keep the bottle inverted or upside down, the solution will be at the bottom of the bottle and will prevent any bubbles from entering the syringe. Finally, remove the needle from the bottle and replace the protective cap over the needle. You are now ready to do the injection. Imagine your penis in a cross section as a clock face with the top of the penis being 12 o'clock and the bottom in the 6 o'clock position. The proper location for the injection is between the 9 to 11 or the 1 to 3 o'clock positions. When injecting, one should avoid the very top of the penis around 12 o'clock where arteries and nerves are located and the very bottom of the penis around 6 o'clock where the urethra is located. Also, avoid any visible veins or arteries on the surface. With the penis placed on stretch, you will want to inject the medication midway between the glands or head of the penis and the base of the penis. You also will want to alternate the injection sites, so you might inject it near the base on the right side and then closer to the glands on the left side the next time. Grasp and pull the head of the penis down towards the side of your leg with the index finger and thumb. Use the left hand if right-handed. While maintaining light tension, select a site for injection. Clean the site with an alcohol pad. Slight resistance is encountered as the needle passes into the proper position within the erectile tissue. Inject the medication over approximately four seconds with the needle at a right angle to the skin of the penis. Withdraw the needle from the penis and apply gentle compression to the injection site for approximately one minute. Several minutes of compression may be required to avoid bleeding, especially if you are on aspirin or other blood thinners. Wait approximately 15 to 20 minutes before engaging in intercourse. This slide illustrates the correct technique of penile injection. Most physicians will suggest that you limit the use of the medication to no more than once a day and no more than three times a week. Keep the medication refrigerated when not in use. Check on the expiration date of the medication and avoid using medication that is beyond its expiration date. Use the needle and syringe only once and be sure to dispose of it properly so that no one can be injured with the needle after you use it. Pain associated with self-injection therapy is minimal, since a very small needle is used. Most men do not complain of discomfort after using the injections for a few times. Pain, hematoma, or bruising, and prolonged erection are reported adverse reactions that may limit a man's ability to stay with the injection therapy. Prolonged erection, more than four hours in duration, and priapism, which is defined as an erection that lasts for more than six hours duration, are only rarely reported. Priapism can lead to the destruction of erectile tissue if left untreated. Thankfully, this serious condition can be reversed by injecting an adrenaline-like drug into the penis. 
If you have an erection that lasts longer than four hours, call your physician or visit your local emergency department as necessary. Self-injection therapy should not be used by patients with penile deformity, commonly known as Peyronie's disease, or by patients having medical conditions that predispose them to prolonged erection or priapism, such as sickle cell disease or sickle cell trait, leukemia, multiple myeloma, polycythemia, or thrombocythemia. Furthermore, those with a known hypersensitivity or allergy to the injection medications or those who have been advised for medical reasons to avoid sexual intercourse should not use this therapy. Self-injection therapy is used by men who have failed oral therapy or who cannot use oral therapy for treating their erectile dysfunction. Injection therapy is effective in 65 to 75 percent of all men suffering from ED, with highest success rates in those men having non-vascular causes of ED, in other words, those whose ED is not caused by narrowing of the blood vessels or leakage of blood vessels. If the injections are used properly, the side effects or complications are minimal. In certain instances, as discussed, self-injections are not recommended and should not be used. Other treatments are, however, available when self-injections do not work. This slide lists some of the many resources available where you can find more information about erectile dysfunction and the use of self-injection therapy. These references were also used to assist in preparing this presentation. We sincerely hope that this module has furthered your understanding of injection therapy for erectile dysfunction. We wish you the best for the future, and thank you once again for viewing this educational program. The corpora cavernosa are surrounded by a fibrous membrane called the tunica albuginea. When the corpora fill with blood during erection, this membrane helps to compress the veins in the penis, allowing blood to accumulate in the corporal bodies and keeping the erection firm. Erection begins with physical or mental stimulation, or both. Impulses from the brain and local nerves cause the muscles of the corpora cavernosa to relax allowing blood to flow in and fill the spaces. The penis expands as it fills with blood. The tunica albuginea helps trap the blood in the corpora cavernosa, maintaining the erection. The erection is reversed or becomes soft when muscles in the penis contract to stop the inflow of blood and open outflow channels, allowing more blood to leave than to enter the penis. Interruption with any of these essential steps the penis contains two chambers called the corpora cavernosa, or erectile bodies, which run the length of the organ as shown here. A spongy tissue fills the chambers, and this tissue contains smooth muscles, fibrous tissues, spaces, veins, and arteries. The urethra, which is the channel for urine and ejaculate, or semen, runs along the underside of the corpora cavernosa and is surrounded by the corpus spongiosum. Program is strictly informational in nature, and no attempt is made to provide opinion or recommendation. Please feel free to view this presentation as many times as necessary. You may also use the player on your left to repeat slides or to skip through them in any order you wish. Erectile dysfunction, sometimes called ED or impotence, is the repeated inability to get or keep an erection firm enough for sexual intercourse. Welcome to this educational program. This module provides an overview of self-injection therapy for treatment of erectile dysfunction. It is independently produced, and all content may not necessarily reflect the experience of your healthcare provider or the specifics of your situation.